Hello and welcome to this tutorial about how to create a crack tool in Houdini. So this, what you see here, is the final result we will end up in this video. It's really simple, but uh, you can fine tune it like this part. It's not pointy, so I leave it up to you. I didn't fix it because I had to uh, squeeze so much information in one hour. So there, this tutorial will actually be two hours. So the next part will be about creating particles, smoke and rigid body simulations about this. I hope everyone can follow along with this tutorial. I, uh, I expect people already know stuff about Houdini. So I'm moving really, really fast. But you can always skip back and you can always ask, uh, ask questions. So let's start. So I just opened up Houdini. And first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this uh, origin nomen all right let's start let's create uh, a box first control uh, control click to drop it di uh, directly in the viewport so let's create this uh, it's called this wall press h to uh, zoom in on the selected node always handy um, first let's give it some values let me see oh sorry this is a bit weird yeah so let's place it on the floor just grab this parameter and divide by two so I if I change this one it will stay there you probably already know this Well, let me, uh, okay, mm, to spice things up, let's uh, add a bevel, so, oh, sorry, a poly bevel, let's use the edges and let's use an absolute bevel, something small. Let's create a bigger wall actually. Needs more volume. It doesn't really matter for now, we can change it uh, whenever we want. Um, so let's create some UVs. Let's use the UV unwrap for this. If I'm correct, yes. It's giving good UVs now. So let's use the quick shade, the UV quick shade node to view our UVs. Beautiful. No, actually not. Let's create something a bit more interesting. So let's export this file as an OBJ and then paint a little texture on this. But first save the project. So we have a hip directory, uh, directory so I'm gonna use my desktop. And let's create, yeah, tutorial.hip. All right, and um, create a new folder for the geometry. Geo, let's call it wall.opj, press render. So we should have an OBJ in this folder. It already has a texture folder, which is not correct. Well, uh, just leave it there then, I suppose. Um, yeah, the geo is here, wall.obj. So let's open a paint program. So I'm gonna use Mari for that, you can use Photoshop. So let's create a new file, create a column map for me. Let's call this wall and let, then load in the OBJ and press OK. I'm gonna paint something really quick uh, now. So let's see. Yeah, it's good. We should have UVs. Splendid. Go back to perspective and go to our layer, layers and add the procedural layer with a tile 
a tile texture. And for a tile texture, I'm gonna import an image. Uh, don't know which one this is, so I'm gonna load them all in and check which one is uh, the best. So it loaded in some images. I'm gonna use this one. Yeah, nice. And just tile it a few times. So two by two. Yeah, looks good. It's not perfect. So if I offset it a little bit on the V. It should fit. But it's not that important. So let's spice it a little bit more by adding a new layer. And then uh, paint using, let me see. Yeah, the dirty uh, paint. But let's see. I'm gonna use green for this. Bake it down. Press B for baking. And let's, let's paint a little bit here. And something here. And let's pick this down and set this layer to overlay. Yeah, it looks cool. So if you also want to use Mari, you can uh, download the trial at the website or purchase a student license or something like that. I've purchased the student license. Uh, I, I thought it was worth it. So let's export flattened layer. Let's go to the tutorial folder and create a new folder. Let's call it uh, Mari because textures was already taken if I'm correct. Call this diffuse.tiff and export all patches. So it's exported now. So let's see if it actually works. It works perfect so now we can actually start uh, with the crack I'm gonna create a null first call it out wall so we can always refer back to this node and I can connect this one whenever I want okay uh, so I want to create the tool so I can paint cracks wherever I want. And then it cre creates a curve for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide it first. Because if you want to paint you need more detail to work with. My viewport is by the way set to smooth wire shaders so I can see my wireframe as you can see. And there's also some weird shading but I'm going to fix that. Oh, well, I, sh I can fix it now. Get a vertex node and cusp the normal, so it's sharp now. Looks, looks uh, really nice. And I'm gonna use a divide node to create more polygons, more detail. I'm gonna use breaker and I'm gonna paste all these channels. So I have to change one parameter instead of three. So let's put in 0.1. Uh, maybe more detail, so 0 0.05. Houdini is quite slow when uh, recording video also. But this is uh, good enough for me. So let's paint uh, a curve. So I'm going to use the paint node. Oh, oh uh, another thing with uh, before painting. As you can see... Uh, it has a solid color first, even though if there, there is no paint channel. So if I open the detail view, I got this by using the plus and then use go, I went to details view. You can see I already have a CD uh, at one, even though uh, I didn't create any nodes for that. 
but it automatically sets the values to one before you start painting. So what I usually do is create a color node oh. and set them to black. So now if we go to the paint node, everything is zero. Okay, so let's grab a uh, red color, which is one. Press enter to paint. As you, you can see a cursor now and shift, click and drag uh, creates a bigger brush. So I'm gonna you do something like this. Since my computer is really slow, it creates uh, gaps, but that's not a problem. Of course, you can do this to create uh, better curves. So let's do something like this around. The, oh, that's weird. computer really does not like this so create a bigger one just do this yeah this one works somehow your computer should be fine if I if I'm uh, right so you can see these gaps but uh, I'm gonna show you how to fix that so let's create a group first so it grouped all uh, primitives but we want points and we want to group by expression so we're going to use dollar cr is bigger than 0 0.5 so let me see what's happening oh somehow it didn't, didn't press the dollar sign now you see this so if I use a fuse node Uh, wait, before I use the fuse node, let's delete uh, everything else but the group. Delete non-selected and delete group and select points. Now we have this. And now let's get rid of the colors and the add node uh, and the geometry. First use a clean node to delete uh, attributes and groups. And then we use the fuse node. Oh uh, wait! And then we use the add node to uh, delete the geometry but keep the points. Now we use a fuse node on the snap setting to snap all uh, close points together, as you can see. And from this we can create a curve. So. I'm going to show you something first. If I press the color node, you can see three, uh, points 399, which is not correct. So we need to add another fuse node and keep unused points should be on. Okay, now we have uh, the correct amount of curves. And as you can see, the order of points is not correct so we have to change that first so let's create a sort node well the w best way to sort these is uh, is grabbing this point the start point or the end point and then um, from there you can calculate uh, the curve so I'm gonna. Uh, so let me see if that. Uh, what's the best way? I can always group by x. The x is using the global x-axis. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 2, 28. But if you want to have more procedural uh, control over this, you should uh, create the. You should select the first or last point. There's no. Not really. Uh, well, there is a is the best uh, well there is a solution for that but I'm gonna use this one for now another way would be press S and press 2 for point mode so select this point and press uh, in, in this uh, node press tab and you can uh, group it here so you group this point point 6 
and now you can uh, sort based on that group so well yeah yeah you can do that let's create an attribute and call, call this select uh, start point And this is a point and should set to one. Well, actually, I can do this. Since it is grouped, I can uh, delete the group, delete non selected, and the points so I have one. And I'm gonna call this um, out and oh I can't type right now <laughs> out selected point and now I can use the sort node to reference from that point so use a proximity to point use a point expression and use out selected points since I typed out in capitals it's uh, putting it up uh, all the way up I already used I got used to that uh, by pressing uh, putting out before all my nulls it's an old habit but I still uh, use it in reference uh, so let's get back to expression grab this node then comma zero for point zero then we want the p parameter for position then press 0 again and let's copy this and change the last one to 1 so uh, this part is x y or z so in in this uh, the second part should be y and then the last one should be 2 which is set now you can see I all also have this this is semi procedural so we we can uh, create another asset for that but uh, I'm going to use it for uh, the way it is now. So there are two ways to uh, sort these points. So if I use an add node to create a curve now. Let's see. And group by polygons. Or polygon by groups actually. I don't know. And you should have a curve. Which is uh, what we want. So now we can grow the curve with a curve node. Let's use the second U so we can do an animation like this. So let's press a key, uh, make some keys, keyframes. So Alt click to create a keyframe. keyframe. Uh, Alt click. Now we have this, which is good for now. And of course you can create some more noise with the curve, but yeah, I'm gonna leave it like that. So let's actually make a, 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 a geometry to subtract uh, the crack. So I'm gonna use a circle with a radius of 0 0.5. And I'm going to use the sweep node. And yes, it works. You can see something like this. But before I'm doing this, I'm going to move this down. And look at the points. I want to have more points, so I'm going to resample it. Using a resample node. And I'm going to use resample by polygon edge because so that way you, you will keep the start and end point which is good so yeah this should be enough points and the carve still works of course because it's Houdini awesome stuff so you should have something like this so now you can skin this and Let's see. 
uh, oh yeah, this should be polygon, a polygon curve, or else it will not skin because it is a primitive and primitives are solids or something like that. Well, there's a bad explanation, but I don't want to explain right now. <laughs> so let's see. We need to close these uh, holes. So use a polycap for that. And then I'm going to show you something else first. And so you, let's use the star for... The star is a wild card, so Houdini will guess which group it will use to close. And it, in this case it works uh, perfectly. So let me show you something first. Use a UV uh, unwrap. No, wait. UV, uh, yeah, yes, let's use this one. And just drop another quick shade in here to, sh to uh, show the UVs. As you can see, the UVs are changing constantly, which is quite troublesome. So that's why I have. Uh, I'm gonna change some some stuff first. So just uh, remove the carve node. Change this to a NURBS curve. And if I use a quick shade in here. Uh, you will see it uh, it stays yeah perfect uh, UV because there's no animation so let's use this note over here this one doesn't work on NURBS so I'm going to delete that one so now if I um, carve the nerve, uh, NURBS sorry, after the UVs Don't use this channel, so put this one back on zero. Let's carve this one. The second V. And the first V should be off. So let's create a keyframe. Go to frame 30. Create another keyframe by pressing Alt click. Now you can see UVs are, are much better. So now, right after the cur uh, carve, we can convert it to a polygon surface, if I'm correct. Yes, the UVs will stay the same. Which is great. So now we can uh, close the user polycap. Sorry, I forgot the star. And if I'm correct, I can also remove the UVs. Yeah, it already has UVs because it's a nerve, a nerve surface. But to be sure, let's do it like this. Oh wait, of course. So this is quite handy for if you want to create uh, some uh, UVs before but I didn't uh, create this because I wanted to have UVs I want to have uh, correct positions in my points I'm gonna show you later but first let's create a decent crack out of this one so let's move this one uh, these a bit uh, up oh mistake so you see I have in my sweep node a scale and I'm gonna manipulate the scale using a VOPSOP and create a spline to shape my cur uh, crack so create a VOPSOP and press H so to create this uh, spline I'm gonna create a ramp parameter and I'm going to call this uh, set scale. Oh wait, I'm going to call it scale. Not to confuse people. And set it to spline ramp. And you should see there's a spline, but it's not doing anything yet. So, 
what we should do, uh, do is uh, just display the VOPSOP first. So you see I have these points uh, 0 to 123 and I want to create uh, some attributes uh, over that uh, through the curve. So I need the total number of points of that and I need the current number of uh, the the point number and I uh, but first I need to and then uh, wait uh, I'm gonna drop a fit note first so we need to have the point number as an input and the minimum points is zero and the maximum point should be total points of no, uh, total number of points as you can see if I connect an integer uh, slot to a float slot it will get dotted but it will still work but I'm, I always use integer to float for that. Just some, uh, yeah, just something I always do. You don't have to do that. So if I now connect the, the remapped values from 0 to 1 and put it in the ramp, uh, still nothing works, of course, as you can see. But I can use, um, let's see, there's no parameter in here. So I'm going to use an add attribute. Connect this to the attribute value. It automatically get changed to float. And let's call the scale. Like this. And still nothing works. Because uh, it doesn't get picked up right here because this scale will get reset and it removes the attribute so we're going to use a point expression to grab the attribute so this is the vopsop and we need to put the scale value in the dollar pt so each point uh, gets uh, a scale value and it, it's asking for a scale, which I created. And then press 0 as a default value. And now you can see we, ha we can manipulate the crack using uh, a spline. So if you press this button, you get a bigger, bigger graph for that, which is quite neat can create uh, fun stuff with this. So if I press play, oh wait, it's not uh, in the incorrect note. Press play. You see I get a clean animation because, uh, let's change this to bigger end. And better start. Yeah, it's good. Because I use NURBS, uh, you get a smooth uh, animation from that crack, you know. Because if I used a carve in a different way, I'm going to show you. Let's display this one and use this carve. Now I'm going to create a new one. After the VOPSOP. You, you can you get weird rotations as you, uh, do you see that's the real, uh, real reason I, why I use NURBS so uh, so you can prevent uh, this weird stuff and it also gets better UVs of course so because I have a more a more, a more clean uh, animation of the curve I, I also have a more clean position of the points and that's really nice to have because now I can, uh, if I increase this value, oh sorry, if I increase this value, I should have more detail. So let's do, use this one. So now if I use a VOPSOP, of course, after the poly cap, we can create some cool uh, detail for the crack. So let's do that. Let's drop in turbulent noise and displays along normal. 
use this as displace amount and put this in as a position yeah it's quite messed up here let's use a fit range let's increase the minimum a bit and let's increase nah it's good let's change this to a sparse convolution change the frequency and let's drop this back down to zero it's quite heavy displaced maybe an original Perlin noise or Perlin maybe 3D noise nah let's use sparse convolution and just don't put uh, too much time in this or maybe the normals are weird let me check yeah they're inver inverted so first I'm gonna use the fuse node to connect all points and then I'm gonna reverse the normals well actually I can reverse the normals in VOPS no I, I, sh I should reverse it before using the VOPS up so there we go we have uh, something else <laughs> so instead of the turb noise I'm gonna use uh, Worley noise maybe I'm just doing something yeah maybe add an, a turbulence noise on top of that so turb noise grab the position and create an add node and add the turbulence on top of that and use a fit range to clamp values down and maybe we want to well, lower the displacement something like well I, we want we want to have this but we want to create a smaller crack but I want to check it with the wall first so let's template the wall yeah this might work let's do this this is weird but because it's Houdini you can change it afterwards so go to the VOP shop I bet it's this part yeah it's also weird just delete this point yeah this is good for now so if I press play we should have a simple curve-ish animation which is okay for now so I'm gonna use it uh, I'm gonna call this out crack So let's check something first. I'm gonna show you a, li a little trick first, and that is um, if I somehow get, let's see, yeah, this overlapping geometry, I can actually fix that afterwards. So I use VDB from Polygon. Let's see and yes polygon 0 0.05 maybe one or two yeah we have a loss of, a loss of detail right now now we can convert the vdb back we're using a convert vdb and let's create polygons from this now you see uh the weird part is less weird so you can actually also adaptively tessellate these I 
which is nice and you can also smooth it of course afterwards but it's actually uh, a massive thing and the real nice thing about uh, these two nodes together is when you add a sphere let's template this and move it up yeah this might work let's uh, merge these together As you can see, every overlapping geometry geometry will get uh, merged together like a super boolean, which is really nice. So I can move it up, and it gets updated. So the reason why I show you this is because this is really nice for creating multiple curves. But we're gonna uh, leave it like that. It is for now. And let's go back to the VOPS app and turn back the fit range. So now we have a crack animation. So let's create, uh, select all these nodes except for the paint node and press Shift C. Now we have a digital asset. Shift C is uh, this button, as you can see. So now we have a crack tool. Let's call this a crack tool. I don't know. You can call it cookie or something or like uh, Batman. And the cool thing about this system is uh, if you go back to this node and drop a new paint node, press the red color and press enter to enter paint mode. Shift drag to increase uh, size if I paint slowly I can I have a curve and if I do this I should have a new curve oh of course that's why the first point I was talking about so let's see in here the point order is fucked up again so th there should be a better way to do that. So in this case it's, it's 1. So I'm going to change this to 1. And go, go back. And press play. And, and this is my new curve. Still not perfect because uh, the proximity to point is also changed. So... You should uh, find a better way to create uh, the, the point order. I, I, well, I can find out uh, r right now, but it's not about this uh, in this tutorial. So now we have a crack. So if we go back to this one. Let's actually break this. I'm going to break it using my way. Well, there are many ways. You can use a cookie node. And a cookie node sometimes work but usually gives uh, lots of problems with it so let's try that first a minus b not really i should be a minus b so i'm gonna use uh, user defined keep inside of b and outside of a maybe no Well, as you can see, it, it, it generates problems for me. So I'm going to use a better way. And the best way is for, for, I found is to use the VDB from particle, uh, Polygon. So let's do that. And create uh, smaller voxels. So you have the, your own shape. And let's use the frac uh, VDB fracture node. I really love the new VDB, it's so stable and it's, it's just amazing. So now you get, uh, yeah, you get a fracture animation. So 
now if I convert it back to polygons, so convert VDB node, convert to polygons, and you can, of course, you can change adaptive, which is really nice. So right after this one, I'm gonna use. Uh, I'm gonna delete a surface, but wait, let me see. This is weird. Oh wait, because I used adaptive, let's put this back on zero. This is weird. Maybe I should go to delete in here. Okay, something is a bit off. Let me check one once more. Oh, of course, if I press play, uh, now I have a cutter. So now I can actually delete the cutting surface or invert the deletion. So delete node so delete non selected now i have the cracking volume you can actually use this for particle simulations or uh, rigid bodies but that's uh, in the next part of the tutorial as you can see this is really slow but the cool thing about this system is um you can go to the vdb from polygon Change this to 0 0.1. And now you can test it in, at a lower resolution. And now you see this. And if you change this to 0 0.05, you can see it's getting updated. That's pretty neat, huh? So you can test out at lower resolutions and then you can go back to the high resolution and of course with the uh, convert VDB you can change adaptive polygons where it needs detail it will give you more polygons so this is quite awesome well, another thing I notice is the oops okay uh, in the crack tool sorry So if I press play, you can see it's really flat here. Well, that's because um, the carve node is cut, uh, carving uh, the nerves. But you can also change the scale on this part to be more pointy, but I don't want to do it right now. A vast virus database has been updated. Go away, virus scanner. So, um, let's see. Now we have this. So the next problem is, if I connect the UV quick shade to this, you will see I don't have UVs. That's why I created the texture to see. So what you can do now is um, use attribute transfer. Which is one of my favorite nodes ever, like ever, like let's uh, create it. Uh, attribute transfer. So I can do all the way this, but I don't like creating long lines through all the all the nodes. Nodes. Oh, don't tell me it's gonna crash. It did not crash. This is the help file. Okay. Check merge. And since I called it out polygons, it's really easy to fetch the out wall. Since I call it like that, it's easy to fetch that one. So we want to uh, transfer points to points. And I'm going to transfer the vertices. And I'm going to transfer the UV only. So now you can see 
my UVs are still intact. My texture, uh, I mean, my texture is intact and it is working great. So the next part is uh, let's create a texture for this side, uh, for, the, for the fractured part. It's also really easy. So let me see uh, from where I should I start. This is the wall. And let's. Yeah, it's good. So we have this part. Let's create uh, create attributes on this one. On the points. And let's call this one. Uh, let's set the value to one. Let's call this one the crack geo or something like that. You can call this Batman. Let's call this Batman, okay? And let's transfer this using the attribute transfer to the yeah to to this one or maybe. Um, yeah, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna use this one. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do that. Right? Oh, instead of uh, yeah, it should be points actually. That's good. So I want to transfer the points to the primitives. I'm gonna show you why. Well, actually, I'm gonna show you right now. So if it changes the points. Crack the points, Batman, and uh, create a group node. Group our expression, and let's take the point group. So, if I'm gonna put in uh, if dollar Batman <laughs> is equal to one, it's gonna get pushed in this group. And now everything is pushed in this group because the distance is too big. So let's decrease it. 0.1. Now we have this. Or maybe a bit bigger. So if I delete the group. Points. Let's delete group 1. Since it's called group 1. Which is not good for me, but whatever. And delete non selected. So let's put these two together. So merge. As you can see, there are gaps in there, which is not nice. So to fix that, I'm gonna use uh, primitives instead. Destination group should be primitives. And in the group node, it should be primitives. Yes, it, and I have primitive groups. Awesome. If I go to my delete node, I should delete primitives. Delete primitives here. Merge them back, and everything is like it should be. So if I use exploded view, you can see it's still separate if I'm correct no it is not it doesn't really matter it works so if it works it works right <laughs> if I use the quick shade on this part of course I should have picked this node I love Houdini. You saw that how quick that went. <laughs> awesome. So um, let's create some UVs for this one. To do that, let me think. Well, it's it's a generating surface, so you can use UV projects to grab some UVs. Space 5 to check the UVs. And you can see it's uh, static, uh, static over here. 
and it creates new UVs over there, which is awesome. So let's use the quick shade, UV quick shade, to check how this this works. Good, it's, it, uh, the UVs are great, as you can see. So now we can use a tileable texture for this. I actually don't know if I have a tileable texture. I should have somewhere on my Dropbox. Sorry, on the E. CG textures and maybe, yeah, the cliffs. So where's the pre preview? I want to see the picture of it. Yeah, this is better. Well, I'm gonna take something simple. This one looks square. So it, it is square 26. 10 by 2610. Let's take this one. No, go away. It's not the best UV for the crack, but whatever. If you merge these two together, this one and this one. So take the UV quick shade on here. This one should go on other piece so group one uh yeah do it like this somehow you can't use two quick shades in the viewport so this one looks pretty neat right well the primitives are too big and it's a bit square because i used the tessellation from the 3db convert so if you put it back to zero you should have a better range of textures this is too big it's my fault change the search radius a distance to 0 0.02 or something well maybe 0 0.5 a little bit on the edge is quite cool you check it out here connect this one here yeah my this might work this this looks quite uh, jacked but there are some uh, ways to fix that so but my way to fix that right now is just to change the distance to 0 0.2 so a little jacked is not no problem I suppose and let's go to the merge node and let's add the quick shade here and let's make a quick render so let's go to frame 63 and create a camera if you oh it's calculating something right if you control click in the viewport from where you're standing it's it's creating a camera at that location Awesome. And let's see. Uh, control click on environment node. Sorry, I didn't want to do that. I want to create the skylight. So it creates the sun for me. And let's create Mantra PBR node. Let's go to the render view, check camera one, press render. Now we have this, which looks quite uh, okay if you ask me. <laughs> of course you can do compositing and fix those edges or I don't know. This looks awesome. So in the next part of the tutorial I'm gonna create rigid body simulations for the cracks and some particles and some smoker or something like that. So see you next time.